guys, it's Karen and I wanted to come and talk to you about what to do if you have had your dog groom cancelled because I imagine there's a lot of people out there panicking. Actually, I don't imagine, I know because I've been getting a lot of emails asking if I would be able to groom dogs um, but I no longer have my salon and I probably wouldn't be doing it anyway. Um, but I have got some solutions for you, so please don't worry. The first thing I did was note down what your concerns would be about not having your dog groomed. And so I figured that a lot of people will just obviously prefer the look of them being shorter. Mats and, and tangles is probably a big concern for you because the longer the coat is, the more likely it is to get tangled and matted. And that is really painful for the dog and you know hard to get out and that would be a struggle because they wouldn't want to be brushed. So I can imagine that's a big concern. Um, heat might be a concern for some people and just practicality might be probably the biggest thing in that if they can't see out of their eyes properly, if the, the hair is too long on their paws and they're tripping over it, um, if the hair is too long on their paws, they'll get paw pads and that could make them limp, things like that. Let me address each of these issues and tell you what you can do. So number one for looks, if you don't like the look of your dog with long hair and you prefer it to look a bit trimmer, you can follow my video that I'm gonna be putting up at the same time as this one on how to do a touch-up groom. A touch-up groom is simply the face and paws. I have, I think it also includes the the bum area um, but that's optional if you clear the area around the eyes and you can see their eyes and you tidy up their feet it can make the world world of difference without doing anything else they can look a lot smarter so that's one option for you if you are worried about the look of your dog and obviously wash and um, keep their coat clean that will always make the dog look better as well but I will talk about that again um, number two, as I said, was mats. That is one that I think a lot of people will be concerned about and rightly so because a lot of dogs only get brushed out and um, washed at the groomers. People think that, uh, that there's a problem with washing a dog too much and I, I'm pretty sure I did a video on it. I certainly covered it in my course. I've certainly talked about it online before. There is no issue with washing a dog. This is um, pretty much a myth that you can wash dogs too much. It applies to certain dogs and certain coats, but not, mostly not the long head ones, certainly not doodles. Um, and as long as you rinse out the shampoo and conditioner, etc., then you will be absolutely fine. And, and I can happily say that because my Watson is nearly six years old. He is an Australian Labradoodle with a sort of, some of his coats curly, some of its wavy fleece. Um, and he has allergies, which have meant we've needed to wash him at least once, sometimes twice per week, every week of his life. And like I said, he's nearly six and he has a beautiful conditioned, shiny coat. Um, the reason for that is that I make sure I rinse out the shampoo. I think a lot of groomers might tell you not to wash a dog too often because if you leave shampoo in and you don't rinse them properly, that could cause them to have dry, itchy skin and it could cause their coat to look dull. Um, so with mats, the first thing I would say to you is don't worry about the groom, wash them. Wash them with a good shampoo, make sure you rinse it out and then apply a ton of conditioner. Now, obviously it might be difficult for you to get a hold of conditioner, but you can get conditioner for dogs. You can also use your own conditioner. Um, I usually pH test mine, but uh, during this time I would say just use a conditioner. Use the least perfumed conditioner you can find. Um, because that isn't great for dogs either, especially ones with sensitive skin, but put a lot of conditioner on. Um, you should really mix it both the shampoo and the conditioner. You should put some in a jug, say about like that, about 400 mils, and mix that in with um, the shampoo, pour that over them, that should lather up enough. Sometimes you need to do that twice. Um, and the same with the conditioner. The conditioner doesn't really dissolve. I sometimes go to the effort of blending it actually in able, to enable it to dissolve and you know not use too much. But again, in these times, it's whatever we can do to get the dogs through it. Um, if you don't use conditioner, you can use a serum or you can use both. I use both on what's, what's on. I use a shampoo and a conditioner. And then either when he's still wet or a day later when he's dry, I will put serum onto him. Any kind of leave-in serum that you use for your hair. It can be argan oil, but only use a tiny bit if you use argan oil. But any of these kind of leave-in serums are pretty good. What this means is that you will be able to brush the coat after they are dry. Whether you blow dry them or not is up to you. I don't think there's any reason to blow dry dogs if they're not going to a professional groomer. Um, you know, you can put a robe on them. We don't even do that with Watson. We just let him naturally dry. Um, and it takes, you know, half a day, probably more for his ears. Um, and when they are dry the following day, brush them through. Their coat will be so much easier to manage um, if you have shampooed all the dirt out because that's often what stops 
you know, you be able, being able to brush it easily. If you've conditioned it and if you've put serum in it, it'll be so much easier to brush. The thing I would say is don't use coconut oil because coconut oil just makes it greasy. You'll then just see it, it comes off the coat onto the floor and you'll just see greasy patches on the floor rather than it being absorbed by the coat. It just doesn't absorb. Um, so that is really the answer to mats. You know, I really don't think it's a problem unless you, if you have a dog that is very, very matted, um, you can try to get the mats out, but it, it, me as a groomer, it would take me three to four hours to brush a very matted dog out and to get all the mats out and it's not a nice experience for them. So you may be left with no choice but to try and shave bits of mats off and hope that hair grows back or try and put some serum directly on the mat and sort of use your fingers to see if you can break it up. You can also sort of snip your scissors into it and that will help break it up and use your fingers like that. Um, but hopefully there's nobody in that situation if you're brushing your dogs regularly. If not, make sure you're brushing them from now. Do a little bit each day. I think that's the only thing you can do now if you do have a dog that's very matted or very tangled. Wash them, condition them, put serum in and then start to brush them just a little bit each day. A lot of people say, my dog doesn't like being brushed. I don't think there's a dog around that likes being brushed. Well, that's not true, there are some. There are some that love it, but most dogs don't enjoy it. You have to train them that if you put up with this brushing, if you like, you'll get a treat. You know, you have to train them that it's something good. Um, I know that Watson hates it. I get my brush out and I hold pork in my other hand and it takes him a while. I'll sit there and go, we're gonna brush you and it takes him a while to come to me and he has to think it through and go, hold on a minute, I don't like being brushed but I do want some pork, but do I want pork enough, you know, um, and eventually he'll come over to me and go, okay then, I'll let you brush me if I get some of that pork. I used the bucket training game to train Watson, and so I'll try and link, um, I haven't done a specific video, I don't think on it, maybe I have actually, I'll link whatever I can for you, um, but it's just a case of holding the brush. If you start with a dog that doesn't like being brushed, hold the brush near them, and hold a piece of pork next to it, so that they have to get the piece of pork from you, just while being near the brush, just start like that. So on day one, just say, here's a piece of pork. You can take it, but you have to come and get it from where the brush is. And then you can offer it to them. Always offer them with the brush. You could even put it on the brush and let them go to it. Then the next stage would be put it near their face or near their legs or near the, you know, just touching them and say, here's a piece of pork, but I'm gonna put this brush on you. And you, you move in stages like that. So that was a long one for mats, but like I said, that is, um, the best way to get rid of the mats is don't worry about the the grooming isn't really an issue it's the washing you need to do and most people will be able to do that at home um the washing brushing conditioning serum etc the next one was practicality so them not being able to see the pause being too long so again you could watch that touch up um video that i'm putting up with this video um and I would say anybody can do it as long as you are careful, as long as your dog is not too young. If they're very young, if they're a puppy and they're wriggling around a lot, it might be a bit difficult. It might take you a bit longer. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a dog on a table. I'll talk about more, more about that in the video, actually. Um, you know, just do it wherever you can. You could even do it in the garden. I do that with Watson sometimes. Um, so again, the touch up will help. If you have an equa fleece, um, when the weather is cool as it's gone going back into being cool at the moment and equa fleece is fantastic but you can even put like an old t-shirt on or something like that just so that you're covering the underneath because i was imagining i would imagine the underneath of dogs is a, is a big problem for people with the mud you know that's where they'll come in and lie down and you know leave a lot of mud around but these equa fleeces are fantastic and um, but obviously you don't want to use them when it's too hot um so like i said you can cut an old t-shirt and tie it underneath them and that would cover you know protect underneath a little bit and soak up a lot of the mud or you could even put their robe on when you're taking them out um, that's something I did when Watson was had his tumour removed I did put his robe on for the first little while and then I found those t-shirts on Amazon I'll actually link those t-shirts just in case you can get them delivered um, because they're really good I'll link some things on Amazon anyway that I think will be useful for you some serums some conditioners all of that kind of stuff. The number four concern might be heat. Um, you're just worried that your dog is gonna be too hot with long hair. So I wanted to briefly mention that because that's another of those. Um, it's not a myth, but dogs won't specifically get too hot just by having a long coat. It, it may, it's more to carry, so it may make them feel a little bit, they may feel a little bit more lightweight with having a very short coat in the summer. However, it's not actually very good for them to have a really short coat in the summer because the long hair 
actually holds in any coolness in their body and it protects their organs and their body from the heat and it protects it from the sun and um, it protects them from getting burnt. So I wouldn't be concerned about that too much. And I actually, I learned this actually before being a groomer and then I learned it again when I was a groomer, um, you know, and have been bemused at people getting their dogs summer cuts because it, it isn't necessarily the best thing to do. Um, but I actually tested it out myself with Watson and his brother who, um, from the same litter etc we went out for a day all of us and it was a scorching hot day and Watson we had just had groomed and he'd just been groomed very short um, his brother however was due a groom and was long they were both playing in the sun you know like crazy Watson was gasping constantly for water panting the other dog Chewy was not panting at all was not bothered and when you touched both of their fur Watson was baking hot and Chewy was cool. And so his coat was doing its job and it was, you know, protecting his organs and everything from getting too hot. So I wouldn't worry about the heat aspect personally. Um, so those are all of the concerns. And like I said, you've got the option to wash them um, and brush them to keep them mat free. You can use my touch up course that I'm about to put up. But I also have lots of other free videos on here if you want to attend to any part of the groom. I think I've got one on how to do the tail, one on how to do the face, which will be pretty much the same as the touch up one. Um, probably one on how to do the hygiene area. And if you want to do the full groom, if you really are concerned and you want to buy the equipment and do the full groom, I have a full grooming course, which I will do a special code for you guys um, so that you can get a big discount off of that course. I mean, it's £60 at full price, so I'll, I'll make sure I discount that a lot for you. Um, and if you watch that, that's me demonstrating everything with Watson through everything. And it's also me giving you, um, you know, there's a few sort of lecture type videos telling you exactly how to know which scissors to buy, which, which blades to buy, which clippers to buy, um, what your dog specifically needs depending on what breed they are, um, whether you need to dry them, how to blow dry them. You know, there's everything included in that course if you want to go the full way. Um, so I think that's everything. I just wanted to let you know that you do not need to worry. It's not the end of the world that you can't get your dog groomed, especially if you have time on your hands. This could be the perfect opportunity for you to learn how to groom your dog. And I actually think it's the best option. Having taken Watson to groomers before I became qualified, which was four years ago, um, I'm not happy with the experiences that they have there. Um, knowing groomers, speaking to groomers, and going, I've been to interviews with groomers, I ended up not taking the job because I just wasn't happy with the system. It's very much a factory system and there isn't the time to, you know, give them treats throughout, make sure they're okay throughout, give them little water breaks, give them the little play breaks. That's something you can do at home with your dog and it's a real bond and experience. Um, and, it, you know, in the end, you will save money, um, especially if you've got big like standard labradoodles and you've got more than one that's going to cost you an awful lot of money whereas if you get a good pair of clippers and I would say you need two pairs of scissors a pair of scissors and a pair of thinners that can be you set up you know and although that will cost a bit of money at first you will quickly make that up I'd say with two dogs in six months you'll have made that up and that will be you doing it yourself forever more you know um, and although it will take a long time at the beginning it will probably take you three or four hours you then quickly you know get good at it and then you reduce the time and you can then style them as you like so um, I do think it's worth doing the course I really do and grooming your, your dog yourself so I hope this video was helpful um, if you've got any questions at all please ask because you know the whole point of my channel is to help dogs and I really don't want my biggest concern is dogs being matted and tangled and, and being in pain because like I said that will pull on their skin and be really really uncomfortable for them so please if you've got any questions ask me and I'll do my best to answer. Um, I'll put the discount code and the link and everything in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.